Hi there Wargamers, Dan, definitely Kane here, uh, bringing you episode 12 and a half, uh, more on that in a second, in my Kings of War vlog. Uh, this time it's um, we're centered on, on a, the base in tube, multi, multi, yeah, multi base in tutorial for how, how to make the bases. Um, the reason it's a 12 and a half um, is because I film this kind of bit a bit in advance because obviously when I buy stuff, go on a bit crazy at conventions and stuff like that. Um, I, I amass a lot of stuff more than one to put um, sensibly into an episode for you guys. Um, so I, I film, I split them up into some little chunks and then build um, one one uh, couple of units at a time then start the process again. But So this is a slot in um, after episode 12. Um, obviously I've, I've already filmed the start of a few of us. But that, that's, that's something for um, a future thing. So this is a, a basing tutorial. Now I've got all that babbling out of the way. Um, this is what I used to make my bases. We've got some 2mm um, um, MDF sheets. Now, um, hindsight, if I started this afresh and if it wasn't um, for me already having a load of, of these bases, um, I would recommend going for the 3.2mm. If you try, if you're doing what I'm doing, if you're just going for like a basic sand, it probably wouldn't need it. But I am, I am experiencing teeny, teeny amount of warpage. Um, well, that's that's just how I'm doing it, probably. But take from what this this tutorial, what you will do, guys. So we've got the the bases. We've got a um, stick or something to spread your grey pumice around, which is what I'm, uh, the main texture is. We've got some um, air drying clay. This and this is just happens with das, and we've got a um, primer can just to prime the bases now more on that in a second so let's get all this I'm gonna clear all this stuff out of the way and we'll start the tutorial uh, this oh sorry before I had to do that the uh, the this is more maybe for for um, Fabian Basland one of the people who commented on uh, episode 10 um, asking how I did my bases so here you go so on to the actual tutorial back in a second guys Right guys, the step one is to prime this base on both sides with a uh, aerosol primer such as uh, this one from Harford's. That one sounds very empty. Um, okay guys, back in a second because I'm sure by now you all know how to use aerosol, use aerosol primer. So back in a second when I've done that. Welcome back guys. Um, as you can see I've um, primed the, the base quite well, that's reasonably thickly. I've got make sure that making sure to get the sides. That's mainly where the uh, moisture will get into. Make, make, will make it warp. So what we're going to do? Quite simple. We've um, tear a bit of uh, modern modeling putty off. Uh, this is probably a bit too much, so we'll just get a little bit a little ball, and we're just going to start building up the base. Now, obviously, it's really rough at the moment. So let's see if we can get a better angle for you guys. Basically, let's do it this way. So, I'll try to get this in, keep this in shot as much as I can, guys. So we get another little bump there. Basically, just keep adding bits on all the way around the base till you've uh, um, covered as much of the base as you want to, and then we're gonna then we're gonna use our fingers to blend it into. Now you don't have to wear gloves, but I'm just being a bit of a pansy, so I don't have to wash my hands. So another little small blob there. So already it's starting to look a bit undulated and stuff like that. Uneven. So you've also got to bear in mind what models you're going to stick it on there guys. So um, You could if you wanted to um, press little stones in there into the base as well to give you a bit more of an interesting texture. I find it makes it hard for just the way I do it. If you say you were doing this and then painting the models on the actual base then it would be, wouldn't be such an issue but I, I, t I tend to paint my models like such and then would paint the base separately so then once this is finished I uh, drill through the base and basically insert the, uh, the guy onto the base so I need to be able to place him and obviously drilling through uh, little stones that maybe there is a bit more challenging than I'd like so and we'll stick another couple more blobs on. So what you can do is do a little sausage. So that kind of like spreads it out. 
So already we've got we're getting like a, a really uneven surface. So what we're going to do now, now because obviously we've got all these these lines which don't look right, is we're going to just go around and, and blend it into the base. Basically, just pressing down and dragging my finger across, and we're going to get lots of little pieces of um, uh, putty, Look at clay. Oh well, it's modelling putty, guys. I think. Tell you what, I'm trying to model the material, air hardening, uh, air drying clay. Uh, that will go with that one. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it is. This stuff. Das. Das ist gut, ja. Yeah, that's about all the German I know, guys. Well, das ist richtig. So once we've gone round there, it doesn't have to be too perfect, guys, because remember, we, I am going to go over this with, um, with grey pumice as well. So there we go, and because this is for a, a certain war machine, it's for my cell snare, there's an, another step which is um, optional for the, the, this kind of thing. Now, my razor saw has recently stopped being as good as I'd like, and there's a, there's a dirty big um, piece of metal on here which was um, put, how it attached to another scenic base which was way too big for what I liked. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this and I'm going to shove it in. So, basically I'm going to decide which, which, which uh, edge of the base I like to be the front. So, I like this one because it's kind of got a slope going up. So what I'm going to do is, try and do it on camera, just, just press it in gently. Then what I'm going to do is uh, work it around. So let's see where here where it's kind of getting into those skulls. Work it off and just peel a bit away. Oh, that's something else I've just remembered. You've got to leave room for your bloke on the, on the back. So, hmm. I'd really, gonna really have to, um, so, did a bit of a mistake there, guys. Easily solved. Pick it up and reposition it and just blend a bit. You just kind of botched up there we go so there's a bit more room on the back now let's get some of that clay off that we don't need now you may say that all the little bumps and stuff i put into it is a bit wasted but um it's just because of the purpose of this base that's all for me for me that's the only reason i did that any of a normal base, I would I would have left the bumps and stuff. Won't be sticking a big model in the middle of it. So well, there was a little gap there, so I just pushed it up. So it's filled. So try not to leave any big gaps with these things like this. So try not so I don't obscure too much of these the details of these scores. There we go, so that's pretty much happy with that. So now I'm going to leave this overnight to, to, to cure or to dry. It, it might suffer some shrinkage um, that you might notice, but it's not going to be um, too noticeable. It's going to go around here to just scratch off the, the edges. There we go, and don't worry about little bits like that. Um, because the uh, the texture we're putting on will cover all them up. There you go. So, so zoom in there, and we'll uh, show it off. Quick little um, show of this model. Okay, guys, back in a bit once that's all dried. Another thing I thought I'd add, guys, just before we carry into the next bit with the dried off, you can also work mo uh, into a model like this uh, where you can hide it, work, hide your base away. So see this little bit here, you just work a bit of clay around there. So there we 
we get a little bit of sausage. So guys, talk about it yourselves. It's a bit harder when it's between like legs or something like that, so so just just like that guys. Same same principle, just build it up and I'm just gonna zoom out so This way I'll make it look like the uh, spirits coming out, coming out of the ground. I mean this one you can go to town on, I can go to town because the model's already on the base. So. It's quite a big bit there but not the end of the world. So I'm going to get a small bit to um, go into this gap here. Now you're probably thinking, there's probably people out there who are actually skilled sculptors are seeing this going and, and turning in the grave, so what I'm using this, this stuff for. Well, I'm not saying that all skilled artists are dead, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I really shouldn't talk when I'm doing nothing. Okay guys, I'm going to finish this off. You know what, you get the idea. Right guys, after that's dried, it uh, should look a bit like this. Uh, this one's not probably the best example I ever did, but um, let's move a bit closer. I'll be trying to have, a, have some focus. There's a slight undulation there, so it's not quite a f flat ground there. So what we're going to do now, it's a bit hard to see on there, it's a... Uh, we're going to turn that into even more texture. And also, a better example probably is this one here. So we've got that ridge base in the front, a bit of dip there. More on this model later, guys, you'll see it in the next episode. Right, guys, so next step grey pumice. Very simple to use. Is that a stick or something, or even your finger if you really want to get some on your on your device or your prodder and just have at it. There's no hard and fast way of doing this. There probably is, um, I don't know in my locker, there's probably people shouting, oh that's not how you use that, and I'm doing it off the off the camera and you can't. Chose a really bad colour to chew do it, isn't it, didn't I guys? So, basically what we're going to do is we're going to cover all the clay. So, uh, usual basing etiquette or whatever you like, just try not to get on the edge of the, edge of the base. Well, that's, that's me anyway, I don't like like it on the edge of my base. You may like it on the edge of your base, which case I've had it, it's your base. There we go guys, so you got it all on, all covering all the clay, or the edge of the base if you want to. So what I like to do, is because if I don't like the edge of the base, just go around with this flat edge and make sure there isn't any end of the sides. You can scrape it off later if once it's dry, but it's easy to get up when it's wet. So, another thing I like to do is, um, just to try and make it look like it hasn't been put on by a, a spatula and it isn't, it isn't butter on a, on a slice of toast so I'll just go over, around with a like a just basically 
touching it. Yeah, that's the best way of describing it. Just hitting it, tapping it on the um, on the, on the pump. It kind of pulls it up in certain areas. Just go around the base doing that. I mean, this is probably very simple stuff with promise. I'm sure there's there's loads of stuff you can do with this stuff. Now, having said that, you're going around this, you may have actually pushed on some of the side, so just scrape the edge again. There we go, guys. I'm going to leave that to set. A um, couple of hours to do it, but I just leave. I'd like to leave it overnight, if that's me. So guys, I'm going to let that set and I'll be back in a second once it's set to show the next bit. Hi there guys, after the uh, grey promise has dried, next thing we're doing, uh, we'll do, I've just scraped around the edges just to make sure any stubborn bits that were got around the edge were, uh, are no longer there. Um, that's not really the next step, but that's, that's just something I've done off camera. Uh, next I'm going to go around the um, over the grey promise with some watered down PVA now. It's about I use a big tub of it. I've made up like loads and like mix 50 50 um, PVA to water. This is just a, probably an unnecessary step, but I do it just uh, out of habit, I suppose. So we're just going to go around the base and do that. It's going to just uh, give it an extra bit of, a bit of strength when I come to dry brush it later. So I'm sure you're all able to do that. Nice slap dash. Almost done. And there we go. Done. So let that dry again, probably overnight or a few hours to let it dry. And obviously, we we'll get some just rub your finger around the outside to get rid of the, um, any stupid amount of excess and just let it dry. And then we'll be on to the next step. We're going to prime it and then we'll be painting it. Right, guys, I've um, finished painting the, uh, the actual casket itself. And I've actually gone back and obviously corrected any um, over um, spray or um, brush when I, with uh, some more German red brown uh, to pro reprime the bits I've messed up. So the next step in this is to give it a, uh, a wash. And the, this one I'm using um, AK Dark Mud. You can, there's also MIG as well, but I just get it from whichever was cheapest at the time. Um, the very simple step. We all know how to use washes, I'm sure, by now. Uh, so, I'm going to fast forward this bit. So, obviously, get bits of. Show you go super speedy, so. Off we go. There we go, guys. That's that done. Probably not the cheapest wash of um, all time, but just the way I do it. So I'm gonna just go around and make sure I've got all the little um, granulated bits. Right, guys. I'm gonna leave that to dry, and we're we'll back in a tick. Once that's dry, and we'll show you the next bit. Catch you in a sec. Right guys, uh, once that's dried, oh, you throw it around a bit, and then you, uh, I'm going to put a go over a, a, a dry brush of a shafty bone over the um, the brown areas. Well, I know that's technically brown as well, but you know what I mean. So I think you know how to dry brush. So cut this bit out. Right then.
Don't know what happened there, guys. I think my shafted bone went a bit weird. But hopefully you'll have better luck. So next to um bring it a bit further up, even though not technically needed now. Um I'd hit it with a layer of screaming skull, same again, dry brushed. And finally guys, it's a bit of sediment white. Right, very light dry brush this one. Right then, let that dry guys, we'll be on for the next step in just a second. Right guys, once that's dried, uh, the second to last step before we start putting the well on, on its, uh, well, the grass and stuff on, it's the um, a wash of our Greg's Earth Shade. This um, not only helps add a bit of a re uh, bit of um, accent, it helps tone down my um, over enthusiastic dry brushing. Just um, slap it on there. Obviously, try not to get it on your mo actual model on the base if you've got one like I have. There we go, we'll leave that to dry and then we've got one last painting stage to do, well two technically, but you can't hear painting the edge of the base, that's as close as you do I suppose. Anyway guys, back in a second. Right guys, um, last, well technically last uh, painting step, we're going to finish it off with a little tiny tiny uh, very light dry brush off, sorry while well, I drop things, Serenite White, uh, very simple, you, you all know this principle. Just very light. And there we go. That's enough. And lastly, uh, we're just going to go around the edge with um, some more of that German brown pri uh, primer that I used to start off with. Just what how I finish my bases. You you choose whatever colour you f f takes your fancy, guys. I'm going to do it off camera because I'm sure you can all edge bases. Alright guys, back in a second with the next step. Right guys, next step is we're going to do some flock. Uh, this is my own flock I made a while, quite a while ago. It's what I used for all my armies. Um, first step is um, I'm going to stick a, just dab a few patches here and there. No uh, rhyme or reason to it. Occasional little, little tiny dab. I think I just uh, like to do a temperate border because I, li I like my armies to blend into the table on plane, as opposed to standing out like uh, if they're on like if they've been on a desert f table or some sort or a board or something like that. Like that. Or rather, should say base is not a board, but you know what I mean. So I like it because you, your average boards are uh, a green uh, temperate field, as it were. I'd say. There we go. That'll do. So. Let's not put the toothbrush, toothbrush, paintbrush in my mouth so I can actually hear me talking. So then I just, uh, I, I, I'm a sprinkler guy, so uh, I could have done this over over the natural pot, but then you probably wouldn't have seen much. So, there we 
There we go. Then give it a good tap, and we're done. There we go. I'm just going to uh, put a water down layer of PVA over that as well to seal it on, and then we're going to let it dry and we're back with the last and final step for uh, painting the base, and then we're done. Right guys, I know I said I'd put it just off camera, but I figured I've done most of it on camera, so I might as well continue. So, uh, i going to speed this up, just dab it on the old water down PVA. And there we're done. Gonna leave that overnight to dry and then we're gonna put some started grass on it. Alright guys, back in a bit. Right guys, once that's um, sealed on and dried, uh, I'm gonna um, I like to apply a little bit of uh, started grass and um, I don't like to cut, basically I like to put a bit in the in the grasses areas I've already grassed up and um, but not all of it obviously so um, little patches here and there, some bigger than others like you know me do for other things so um, don't take this as, as, as a definitive way of um, how to apply static grass because um, this is probably a better um, way of saying just how not to do it. But I, I'm stuck in my ways and I, I'm too tight fisted for what to buy a, a, an applicator or whatever you call it. So just a bit. No real reasonable plant rhyme to where it's going so I like to just, just grab a bit of pinch of static grass and uh, just kind of jam it on there we go and then get rid of the excess by tapping pull any bits I don't like off that, that seem like they've um, we attach to each other rather than the thing and a bit bow. There we go. And that's that. So that's static grass applied. Uh, we're gonna let that dry. And uh, then whoops, get rid of that bit that I don't like the look of. Yeah. Let that dry and then we'll um attach the uh, the priest guy on the back and then we're done. Okay guys, back in a second. Right guys. Welcome back yet again. Um, after some another set of drying time, um, it's now finished. Well, it's all upon finishes. We're just missing the uh, crew member now. So I've got my crew member painted up, and um, well, it's a priest. I've kind of made a priest out of some um, a cro a miniature by Crocodile Games. I'm not entirely sure what it was. I got it from a convention in a bargain bin somewhere. Um, Anyway, that's, that's not the point. So we've got I've got my guy on on his uh, steel rod, which do, serves double purpose, and we've got the thing on the base. So what to we're going to drill into this through, through the actual um, model input and stuff. So um, this time's come to take it off it off off the off the sticky tack or whatever we call it, the white tack, the blue tack, the grey tack. Cause it's now kind of going to got paint on it. So. Also need to decork this fella, so best way to do that is I get my pliers, so I don't risk um, snapping the the peg by pulling it out or doing something stupid. So need to decide um, where whereabouts he's going to stand. Just let me get rid of that bit of crap off the pliers. Um, so I've decided um, this is going to be the back because the the little to no texture on the bottom part of the um, altar base there where the rest of it's got all these skulls knocking around so I figured that's the front and the, the guy's gonna stand behind and do it so basically I'm just gonna you can't really see but I've got the um, there we go if I do that there you go that's better give me an idea where, where I'm gonna drill so I've got um, bear in mind you've got, you've got to be enough, enough room for his foot to go down so about there will be right so do that so it gives you that I've eyeballed that 
If you want, you can just press it down a bit, just probably make a bit of a, uh, an indent. And I've got my uh, Tamiya drill, fantastic tool. And we're just going to drill in straight through. There we go, so simple as, best tool ever. I'm just going to get my knife just to uh, clean the bottom up because you get a little um, exit wound, as it were. So I'll just get rid of that. Now, next step just requires a bit of force, a tiny bit. And we're just going to push the rod through the, um, there we go, push it straight through. And we can, we're going to do a dry fit. Now, already I've noticed a slight problem. Is that you can see the limb wire. I've, um, it's it's a, in a good position, but due to the, the um, the angle of attack, as it were, it's not brilliant. So um, I'm gonna try bending it. Well, that looks, that looks stupid. So what I'm gonna do, guys? I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna go somewhere else. We're gonna go a bit further forward because there's a quite a bit of room. Oh, there we go. Between the front of the uh, the back of the altar and these his toes, so we can go. We can afford to go a bit further forward. Now, won't worry about the hole because. Apart from if you really look really close up and it's not even focusing, so you can, you can see that hole, but if I pull it away, you can barely see it. And plus the models can probably sit partially over that if we do it in the right place. So, I'm going to try again. Sorry, you can't see that, but just fill in the hole, guys. Same again. Clean the exit wound up. I mean, a lot of times it's just trial and error, guys. So I'm going to try and do that again under the camera. So we get, yeah, you can see that going good. Hit the hole. There we go. Pushed it through. So going to rotate him a bit and then pull up dry fit. This is, always, this is why it's always a good idea to dry fit stuff, guys. Nope, he's got a bit cockhead. Something to bear in mind, if you pull too hard, you end up pulling the pin out the bottom. There we go. It's good enough. Um, what you could do is just uh, do that. Bend the pin a bit. I mean, you can see it slightly there, but put a dab of black paint on that and you won't, won't notice. So what we're going to do now is just, just before we snip the uh, the, bay, the pin off, we're just going to push it up a bit. So there's a bit of room to work and we're going to stick some super glue under there. Rivet it and stuff, isn't it, guys? So, yeah, I'm just going to try to keep it in a shot while the glue decides to come out. There we go, but I'm sure you can apply glue even though I'm not keeping this bit. I'm struggling to keep this bit in shot, so glue's on. I'm just going to pull. Pull down. There we go. Don't pull too hard because obviously um, it ha it's happen it happens occasionally where you you the glue will fail inside his foot and you'll, you'll pull the pin out. So that's nice and secure in there. We don't even need to really wait for the super glue to dry. We can just get get our clippers. Get rid of that pin. There we go. Nice and smooth underneath. And we've got a uh, finished model sticking that stood there, casting his, his casket spells. There you go, guys. There's a little quick basin tutorial, and uh, the model's not in shot. So I'm just going to bang a few uh, stills on the end of this, and um, not too many because that'll be part of the actual proper uh, vlog series when I come uh, when I. Do this episode, finish this episode, or you may. I can't remember which where I am with this recording at the moment, guys. Anyway, if you've liked what you've seen, guys, um, hit that like button. Um, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. You see more great, uh, more content like this. And um, as always, guys, have a nice day and happy wargaming. See you later. Bye.